Hi everyone, my name is Kieran from 81 Vintage and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I created this geometric antique inspired chest. If you like this video please do remember to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to see lots more content, fun upcycle projects and quirky creations. So to start I built a wooden box just for some from some scrap plywood and I gave it an undercoat of some brown spray paint that I had on hand so that you didn't see new wood. I was really inspired by this antique chest of drawers that I saw on Instagram. It's a Hungarian piece, very expensive and it sold within minutes and I knew that I wanted to create something similar. So I had a couple of holes left to fill from some screw heads and I mixed some simple filler but I always mix it with PVA glue rather than with water, that's a good pro tip. I find this just makes it a little bit more sticky and it sands off exactly the same but it tends to just fill that bit better. I was originally trying to use some leftover paint and I gave the piece an outside coat with some latex paint and I found later on that this would be my huge downfall. Once I got inside I realised I didn't really want to use the latex paint because it's um, permanent on if you get it on floors and so I decided it would be a perfect opportunity to experiment with ferny paint. The Ferny Paint Powder Paint range can be mixed in any consistency and so for this one I went for a slightly thicker consistency. I was still experimenting with the white and the coverage on the white and we've adjusted the recipe since this so that it goes on much more smoothly in a more of a one coat. So on this project in the original formula I applied two coats. Ferny Paint Powder Paint is a milk paint alternative. It's dairy free and it comes in a powder and you mix it according to your ratio that you want. You can mix it thinner to make it more of that uh, crackly, chippy type finish, um, which you can achieve or you can mix it thicker so that it's more of a one coat, one step paint. Then it was time to measure out all of the sizes of the squares. So I went for a 10 centimeter square, which just happened to be the right size for the box. I drew this on by hand with a pencil and a ruler. And once I started, it went very quickly. I then measured up so that I could create lines that would go across and I worked in half and half on this box. So I did one, I did the left side and then I did the right side. And on these types of boxes it's best if you work from the centre just in case your pattern doesn't exactly fit. Um, mine didn't and mine finished sort of not on a full diamond square so um, this really worked out well working from the centre outwards. Then it was time to start painting. I knew this project was going to be quite tedious but I was looking forward to sort of that repetitiveness where you can just sit and chill and not really worry about it too much. I had a bunch of leftover double sided sticky tape that I was using for masking tape. This is quite low tack and uh, I bought loads of it for some educational posters that I used to make uh, that we sold in the shop. And I just started by outlining the design and then working out which ones would be painted, which lines wouldn't be painted and then filled them in with this emulsion tester roller. I got these rollers for free from Wix when they were having a clearance uh, and so I bagsy two of them which was lucky because that was exactly what I needed for this project. Now I could have used ferny paint for this and just stenciled but I just thought the roller would be super easy to work with on this project. 
and I've been using double sided sticky tape on my projects for ages. This is a clip of my very, of my second YouTube video uh, which is over four years old and I actually talk about using double sided tape in this project. Hi, my name's Kieran from 81 Vintage and today I'm going to share with you one of my favourite tips for getting a straight line when painting. I don't buy masking tape anymore, and, instead I buy and there was nothing, sticky and tape. And it gives a really neat crisp line when you peel it off. And after a while you do start to get into a flow. I did try and calculate where the pattern would lead to so that I could do more patterns randomly across the box but I found that I made a mistake and so it was just easier to follow the pattern in order all the way around. And whilst doing this you really need something good to watch. I'm going to be quite controversial here and say that I started Mad Men and to be honest I don't really get what the hype's all about. It's not something that I've carried on watching but I did manage to get through the first series and half the second series whilst doing this project. Then it was time to distress. Because Fernie paint is a non-toxic paint, I was quite happy to distress it inside. I just used some sanding paper and we'd also had some plastering done this week that I hadn't fully cleared up from, so a little bit of extra dust wasn't really. The blue paint really distressed very quickly and Fernie paint powders. You wanna make sure that if you're using Fernie paint that you don't use a wet rag because the paint is water soluble. So make sure you use a dry rag to brush up that paint and then um, I just flapped it out the window. And then for this piece I decided to use this vintage wax brush that I found just with some Annie Sloan clear wax. I've been trying to use up some of the older paints and things that I have floating around that I don't really use that much and just want to finish up. So I applied a generous coat of this then I did one pass over to remove all the excess and then I went in there and buffed it. These microfiber cloths are really great and easy for this and um, I just dispose of them once I'm finished with them. I was going to apply a bit of a dark wax on the edges just to age it up but in the end I thought the contrast between the blue and the white really worked. And then this is where the mistake happens, so because I used the latex paint on the top it started to pull up because it was a varnished piece of wood that I'd used as the lid. So I tried a couple of alternatives and again in the end resorted back to Fernie paint to resolve the issue. And these are all of the rolls of double sided tape that I used for this project. And this is all the individual strips that I used on this project. But this is how it came out. I really like how this piece came out. If you're interested in this paint, be sure to head to funnypaint.co.uk or .com. And in the bottom corner is one of my fire buckets from a previous video that I now use as a rubbish bin. If you like this video, please do remember to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to see lots more content, fun upcycle projects and quirky creations. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.